Welcome to Designing and Deploying Exchange 2016 Transport. Before we get started, just a quick introduction about myself. My name is Paul Cunningham. I'm a Microsoft MVP for Office Servers and Services, specializing in Office 365 and Exchange Server. You can find out more about me at my blog. And to find more Exchange tutorials, you can check out exchangeserverpro.com. This course is part of the series for exam 70-345, which is the Exchange 2016 certification exam from Microsoft. It covers the Plan, Deploy, Manage and Troubleshoot Transport exam objectives. Transport means mail flow. So that means we're going to look at internal mail flow, which is email between mailbox users within your organization. We'll also look at external mail flow, which is email to and from people outside of your own organization. For external mail flow, some organizations deploy the Exchange Edge Transport Server role, which is a dedicated server role designed to sit in perimeter networks for external email. We'll take a look at that server role as well in this course. Security is an important topic, so we're going to look at how you can protect mail while it's in transit by using TLS to encrypt communications. And we'll also look at message hygiene protecting exchange from viruses and spam in email messages. Monitoring and troubleshooting will also be covered, looking at topics such as monitoring of mail queues, analyzing message headers, and various tools for testing and troubleshooting mail flow. Later in the course, we'll also get into some advanced mail flow scenarios, including looking at controlling mail flow with transport rules and handling routing for email domains that are shared with other mail systems. Finally, we'll go into site resilience for transport, ensuring that mail flow continues to work even when you have a data center outage. Throughout this course, you can expect to see explanations of technical concepts and also demonstrations of configuration and management tasks relating to transport. Because this is Exchange, that means you're going to see lots of PowerShell Wherever possible, I will use PowerShell for demonstrations. And here and there, I might drop in some additional recommended reading for you, just to help you prepare for that certification exam. What I won't be covering is general exchange deployment tasks. So that is things like preparing Active Directory to install Exchange 2016, preparing a Windows Server and installing Exchange Server 2016 itself, except for the Edge Transport Server role, where I'll just point out a few differences from the standard preparation and installation process. If you need some help with those tasks, then you can either check out my Pluralsight course on migrating to Exchange 2016, which includes some lessons on those topics, or have a look at the lab setup guide, which is a PDF file provided with this course. For the demonstrations in this course, we'll be looking at the Globomantics scenario. So I want you to meet my good friend Dave. Dave is the senior systems engineer for Globomantics, and he's been tasked with adding a new SMTP domain to the Globomantics organization, deploying edge transport servers for Globomantics, implementing some spam prevention, adding a disclaimer message for outbound emails, and configuring a shared SMTP namespace for a part of the company that is divesting and splitting off into their own exchange organization. The Globomantics environment involves four exchange servers distributed across two different data center locations. There are two servers in San Francisco and two servers in New York, all part of the same Active Directory forest, part of the same exchange organization. In the last two courses, which were about mailbox databases in course one, and then client access in course two, we looked at how the Exchange 2016 mailbox server role can be viewed in terms of front end services, which is the client access part, and back-end services, which is the mailbox databases part. For this course about transport, the same front-end and back-end concepts still apply. Only this time, both front-end and back-end services exist. 
There are in fact four transport services on an Exchange 2016 mailbox server. There is the front end transport service, the transport service, and then the mailbox transport service, which actually consists of two separate services called the mailbox transport submission service and the mailbox transport delivery service. Here's what each of those services is responsible for. The front end transport service is a stateless proxy for inbound external SMTP traffic. So that is traffic or SMTP connections coming from servers or devices that are not part of the exchange organization. Optionally, it is also a stateless proxy for outbound SMTP connections. And that's something I'm going to explain in a later module in this course. A couple of points to remember about front end transport is that there is no message content inspection performed on the front end transport service and no queuing of email occurs on the service either. The front end transport service can only communicate with the transport service on the same mailbox server or on a different mailbox server. The transport service handles all of the SMTP mail flow for the entire organization. It performs categorization, which basically means working out how to route an email message. It also performs content inspection. So this is the layer at which things like malware scanning can occur and also content inspection, looking for anything such as keywords or sensitive information. The transport service can queue messages and the transport service will only communicate with the front end transport service, transport service on other mailbox servers, mailbox transport services on the same or other mailbox services or edge transport servers or external SMTP servers for outbound email. The mailbox transport services are the services that communicate directly with mailbox databases for both inbound and outbound email. They only communicate with the transport service on the same or other mailbox servers. On the mailbox transport services, there is no message content inspection that only occurs at the transport service. And there's also no queuing. Again, queuing will only occur at the transport service as well. Each of those four services exists as a Windows service on the Exchange 2016 mailbox server. And you can see them if you open up the services management console and just look at the list of Microsoft Exchange services. One of the terms that you'll often hear when describing Exchange 2016 mailflow is this concept of the transport pipeline. Microsoft defines the transport pipeline as a collection of services, connections, components, and queues that work together to route all messages to the categorizer in the transport service on an Exchange 2016 mailbox server inside the organization. And the transport pipeline looks something like this. In the middle of it all is the transport service and the categorizer, and basically all roads lead there where the mail is coming into the organization and towards a mailbox database or leaving a mailbox database trying to head out of the organization or to a different server, it always traverses the transport service and the categorizer. This transport pipeline starts to look a bit complex when you see all of those components involved. And remember what I was saying earlier about services that can connect to transport services on other servers. Well, throw another server into the mix and it starts to look really complex. There are a lot of different ways that different services and components can talk to each other on different services to facilitate mail flow internal to the organization and external to the organization as well. And when you look at that, you might be thinking, do I really need to know that? Well, no, you do not need to completely remember everything about that diagram for the purposes of the Exchange 2016 certification exam. It might be a diagram that you refer back to from time to time, but as far as what you need to remember on a day-to-day -day basis and in preparing for the exam, you can think of it in a much simpler way. There are just a few simple rules to keep in mind. Consider first of all that services on different servers can talk to each other. 
The front end transport service talks to the transport service, either on the same server or on different servers. The transport service talks to the front end transport service and the mailbox transport service, again, either on the same server or on different servers. And the mailbox transport services talk to transport and to the databases themselves. The logic behind this transport pipeline should become easier to understand as we go through this course, since we'll be spending time examining features and behaviors that occur at various points within that transport pipeline. So with that said, let's get started.